Yeah, I, I will tell you about the music industry on the front of the artists. I, I don't come from the music industry. I, I don't know the world of musicians very well and so on. But I, I think it's a really, it's a concrete example of what you can do with the blockchain and how you can really help people and change the way we connect to music and musicians. And so the three logos here are three different projects that I will speak about. Uh, so the first one on the left is BitTunes, based on Bitcoin. The one on the middle is called Uyo Music, and it uses Ethereum. And the last one, PureTrax, uses BitShare. So I will speak about three different blockchain, but you don't need to know the, de the details from that. I want to tell you about the details. Just what can be done for the music industry. So first, I would like to speak about, about the evolution of digital music. You, you all know what it represents. So the big boom of digital music was the CD, the compact disc, obviously. You, before the internet, you heard a song in the radio, you liked it, you go to the music store, and you buy the CD, and everybody was really happy with that way to distribute music. It was a good revolution, and that was the peak of the music industry, the compact disc. And then what you see here, is the logo of Napster. So Napster, I don't know if you heard about Napster, but <laughs> yeah, most people know about Napster, but new people especially. So that's internet. The city was before internet, but then internet appeared and peer to peer network. You could share your music files just by sending them basically like an email. The Napster that I work with email. But we don't care. It's just you can send your music files for free. And so at that moment, the music industry be begins to decline. And so Napster had a huge legal reaction to stop it. And yeah, it was free. So obviously, the music industry don't like to distribute its music for free. <laughs> so Napster was not really killed, but it became a legal service and it stopped. And the reaction was to protect the music files with DRM, and people didn't like the DRM, obviously, because it, it, it gives you less right to use your own music. And the next revolution was iTunes. Uh, so iTunes uh, is just a music store. You can buy your music on iTunes. Most of you probably have used it at some point. And so you can just buy your songs online. And that's it. And that was the main actor of the music industry for a while. Uh, most uh, musicians use iTunes to get their money to their clients. And it done a good job and earned a lot of money and was the main actor. But then uh, streaming networks appeared, like Spotify or, yeah, most of you probably know Spotify. It's just you can stream music for free. And so Spotify is the last actor and we are currently in the era of streaming music. You can uh, access to a catalog of music by streaming services. So just to get back how artists uh, earn money in the era of iTunes. Um, so basically you buy a song, it costs approximately yeah, one dollar. And on this dollar, 35 cents goes to Apple. So it seems like a lot, but actually Apple has to pay uh, credit card fees that are quite high. And even so, if they can group some transaction and pay only once the credit card fee, uh, if you buy only one song, uh, generally it means that Apple earns only actually a third of what you for the charges. And the 55 other percent goes to the record labels so the music production industry. And this music production industry uh, gives back only eight to 11 cents to the artist. So basically the artist has to sell uh, 12,000 CDs, not CDs, individual tracks, uh, each month if he wants to make a living, which is a quite high number. Obviously if you're a star and your music goes on the radio, you sell much more than 12,000 a month. But for most artists, it's really hard. And so, yeah, I speak about the music industry in the US because, yeah, that's the one, the 
most people know about on that. And I actually, I have no idea in Europe if it's exactly the same numbers, but it's probably very close to it. And then, all artists make money with Spotify. So Spotify earns money by two ways. It charges users uh, that have a premium account uh, for $10 a month. The user can access to the whole uh, catalog of Spotify, so they can listen to whatever they want. And that's uh, the, the subscribers. Uh, that's 90% of the income of Spotify. And the other income of Spotify is from the advertisement. So if you're not, uh, if you're not subscribing to Spotify, you can't play the songs you want, it's in a shuffle mode, and you have to listen to some advertisement at some moment. And so then this income is split between Spotify itself, 30%, uh, and 70% for the music industry. And on this um, money currently, so 0 0.06 cents to 0.08 uh, is given to the music industry per stream, not to the artist, to the music industry, and then the artist has to sell, not to sell, to, to, to be listened to one million times a month if it wants to make a living. So that's even worse for many artists. It's really, really, really hard to, to get a decent living with that. Obviously, the same way, if you are a top star artist, everybody listens to you, you can make a really good living, but for most artists, it's just quite horrible. And the worst in that is that Spotify doesn't even make money at the moment. <laughs> if you look at the, it makes a huge revenue, but since it gives back most of its revenue to the music industry, and then it has some huge operating costs, not huge, but still a lot of uh, digital power and so on. So actually, uh, the, 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 the net income in black, so that's what Spotify earns, really. Uh, has been negative for its history. So, they say that, yeah, but at 40 million users, subscribing users, at the moment there are 20 million, when they will be at 40 million, they will earn money. Okay. But at the moment, they are still unprofitable. And do artists like Spotify? No, they don't. Why don't, why don't they like Spotify? It's the royalties distribution, not only of Spotify, but in the music industry in general. There is a big lack of transparency. It means that uh, the artist doesn't really know how uh, its distribution happens and what the contract was. and They, they, they feel uh, disconnected from their product, actually. They don't know the contract. They know the contract with the music industry, but they don't know what the music industry, uh, the record levels, sorry at the record levels uh, uh, did. And so they say, yeah, I don't even know how much my music is sold. And so they, they, they feel quite bad about that. I, I don't know many artists, but what I've seen online is they seem to be quite angry at how it works. And yeah, there is, uh, it's quite inefficient the way the royalties are distributed because 11.7% are just lost on operating costs. It's not transparent, nobody knows exactly what happens. And um, sometimes the artists must wait one year or two years before they get money back on their, on their uh, songs. So it's quite, they're quite um, not happy with the situation of the distribution of royalties. So what can the blockchain do? Um, now we have this great technology of Bitcoin on the blockchain. And many people uh, in the music industry have been thinking, maybe we can do something about it. And so this problem of, because it's mainly a problem of paying money, transferring money from people to people, uh, yeah, the blockchain can solve that. So we'll see three different projects that aim at solving the, the problems of the music industry. First, BitTunes. So BitTunes is entirely by, based on Bitcoin, the first digital currency, and it's quite simple actually. It's just rather than having uh, a privatized uh, music uh, store like iTunes have, you distribute the music by peer-to-peer. -peer. So 
you share the files like on a peer-to-peer -peer days. And when you want to buy a song, I use Bitcoin. So if you use Bitcoin, you don't have to pay the 25 cents uh, uh, credit card fees. So you, you pay only 5 cents at the moment when you make a transaction with Bitcoin. And yeah, that basically that's it. That's iTunes, but with Bitcoin. That, that's what BitTunes tries to do. Uh, but it's mainly targeted at independent artists because they say, yeah, it, it excludes all major label music. They don't want no intermediary between the artist and the listener. Just by a tune directly to the artist. And that's good for many artists, but for some others, they are huge. Um, marketing fees and so on, and so they, they, they won't be able to use BitTunes because there is no place for the intermediary. And one limit of BitTunes is probably that Bitcoin is not really well suited for microtransaction or for low transaction. Because in the future, at the moment, Bitcoin is only 5 cents, but at some point it may go higher and it will probably go. So if you want to buy a song at $1, and if you have to pay more than, what, than 5 cents, maybe 10 cents, maybe more, it will be hard. So, but that's one of the projects, that's the simplest way to use Bitcoin to solve some problems of the music industry, but it's hardly a revolution. It's just a music store with Bitcoin. But then we have things that are more, much more life-changing. And the first one is called Uyo Music. So they use Ethereum, so Barabash told you a little bit about Ethereum. Ethereum enables smart contracts. A smart contract is basically just a computer program. When you say, if you send one dollar to this address, the, the dollar will be split between this person and this person and this person with such and such an amount. And it's done automatically. So as soon as someone buys a song, with Ethereum, uh, the, the money is immediately split between the right holders. <laughs> so every musician has its share, every artist, and so on. And the second thing that it can do is to have an open data database of the, <coughs> of the copyrights of the song. So I'll show you the prototype because it's only at the... Uh, yeah. Hopefully you have internet if you don't have stuff that no, okay. probably one of us. Internet active. Um yeah, if it's not that bad. Wait, it should be. Uh, it should be. <laughs> so at the moment we are using only make one prototype to show what it would be like. Stop, stop, stop now. Yeah, we'll right. okay. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> so I, I just have a screenshot of the thing so that I can show you a screenshot. Uh, 
it's just a prototype, so it's really beautiful, but it's just the artist can share a web page, basically, so you can listen to an extract by clicking here, you can download the song, and then you have all this information that you can look into. Click here, for example, you'll see how the money is distributed when you send money to, when you download the song, and you can see what you can do with the song, uh, can you use it yourself, uh, you can download the different, ah, I don't remember the name, but the different instrument uh, tracks, uh, if you pay that much, and they tell you all the licensing stuff, you have all the information, and you also have the information of who participated, because artists are, are quite sad that now that we don't have CDs anymore, they can't share artwork on the correct credits to all the people that participated. And so with that, we, we can share everything. And so yeah, you have the lyrics and the, all, all what the artists want to share. And so that's just a prototype, it's working, you can download it if you send uh, 60 cents of Ethereum, if you have Ethereum, if you don't have, you can't, but it's easy to buy. And yeah, that's a working prototype. And yeah, the Ethereum, that's one of the main uh, projects trying to, to get into the music industry. And, but that's not the one I, I know best. The one I know best is Piatrax, because I really get uh, interested in it, and I invested in it. And so that, that's the one I, I know best. If, if you have question about your music, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know it very well. I, I would love to learn more about it. Yeah. So the last project is called Peer Tracks, and it uses still another blockchain called BitShares. So that's another uh, cryptocurrency that enables different things than Ethereum. Ethereum is really the most flexible blockchain because you can program anything on Ethereum. BitShares is different, uh, I won't tell about the difference, just, yeah, concurrent. So in, in BitShares, what you can do is you can uh, create your own cryptocurrency, uh, crypto token. So an artist could create his own coin, uh, like Bieber coin, if Justin Bieber wants to share <laughs> his... Yeah. yeah, I always say Justin Bieber to speak about it, but yeah. So you, you can create your own token with BitShares, and you can uh, you specify the amount. So you create uh, 10,000 Bieber coin, and then there it is. There are 10,000 Bieber coin in the world, and you can do whatever you want with them. And it's public, and once you create your own coin, you can't change the amount anymore. You can't break these rules. And so everybody, and then you can, uh, use this coin exactly like any other cryptocurrency. So you can send it to someone, you can sell it on an open market, or you can, yeah, to share it. Yeah. yeah, and the artist coins are named notes in your tracks. Yeah, that's, that's really important. So what you can do with that, what can you do with that? It's really exciting actually because uh, you can decide by yourself when you're the artist what you want to do with that. And so, for example, uh, Justin Bieber could sell his coin and then, then choose at some moment to say, okay, if you have uh, 50 coins, uh, you can send them here and you can uh, come to my party. No, it's 1,000 whatever the amount, you, you can choose. And so you can create, um, uh, the fans will try to buy your coin. And so the, the price you rise and so you can sell it. It's, uh, it's an open market for the artist coins and so it's kind of a VIP membership for the artist. But beside of that, the artist also has a way to just sell his music or concert tickets or anything on the blockchain. Uh, it's like uh, uh, it's like real music and, 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 the, and the, yeah, the basic services, but you, you have this art coin uh, thing. And so there is no limit for, with what you can do. With, uh, it's only your imagination. If you, if you have a new idea of how you want to interact with your fans, 
you say, okay, if you have 10 of my coins, you can come to this chat and I will answer you and so on. You can do what you want. And what this, what this can cause is that since the, these artist coins, each time uh, the artist generates fees, and you generate fees just by selling a music album or a music uh, concert tickets, uh, some of these fees will be used to buy back uh, your own coin. And what does that make? So that's automatic. And that makes that the more people uh, know you and uh, buy your music, the more your artist coin will go up in value because it will be bought back. And so there is an incentive for the fans to find a new talent. New talent. So if you say, Oh, this artist, I really love him. I'm pretty sure that he will be really successful. You can buy his artist coin, and then you can promote it. And if you promote it, you may earn money on, on that. So it's actually a way uh, to decentralize the, all the promotion stuff. And it's quite interesting that if you're really uh, fond of an artist, you can help him grow, and you will benefit from it. And so, yeah, the, I don't want to go too technical or too much deeper, but I would love to answer any question. And so the blockchain technology has the potential uh, to, to make music profitable and to create a, a new way to connect with your fans. And that's really, I, I really like this idea. But of course, what it does is it cuts the middleman. Uh, you don't need uh, most of what the music industry is right now if you have this blockchain tools. So it's really disruptive, and at the moment, it's not built at all. Uh, peer tracks, they don't even have a working prototype, they're working on it. Uh, but at the moment, nothing really exists, it's just in a potential. But probably that's what the music industry will look like in maybe 10 or 15 years. So, here it is. Thank you.